Hello and welcome. It's early 2017. India is witnessing one of its most extraordinary periods of political stability. So what does this stability mean for business and what is business expecting now that things are looking a little more predictable? To discuss this, I'm joined by Harshwardhan Niyotia of the uh, Abuja Group. Thank you so much for speaking with us. So, uh, Obviously, you know, elections are over, there is a sense of stability, uh, there is, seems to be a certain direction that has already been defined and we're moving along. What is business now expecting and expecting more now that things are under control? Well, generally, I think uh, in the past couple of years, uh, business has been reasonably optimistic, except that uh, the growth numbers didn't work out as well as we had hoped. And that really happened largely on account of the uh, slowdown in the world but of course small factors that were affecting us internally like for instance uh, uh, the NPAs and, uh, and the fact that capital investment was somewhat subdued. Now what I see is that uh, capacity utilization which was a big issue for spurring in new investments is now reaching a level where new capacities would need to be added. Can and you give us some examples? I think uh, in most of the sectors uh, Say a year ago, I think the capacity utilization was hovering around 70-75%. I think it's moved up to about 80-85%. And uh, before this calendar year is out, I would think it would have reached a level where uh, you would really need more investment. Of course, not to say that in terms of world capacity, uh, we still have a huge overhang. And uh, China continues to be a major threat in terms of the imports that they can bring into our country. But uh, having said that, I'm sure the country, uh, the com mm, government is vigilant enough to see that uh, dumping doesn't take right. place. And uh, I think uh, also from when you look at it, customizing products to local markets and seeing that the manufacturing happens m much closer to the consumption base and things like that, right. private investment should happen. Right. So. I mean, I'm still trying to link it to the stability, right? I mean, I'm not saying that was this was the issue that was uh, mitigating against it, but assuming now that we have a higher degree of stability, what are the what is the next generation of reforms that you expect, or what is the acceleration that you expect, perhaps, in existing reforms? Well, as uh, I'm sure the government has much more leeway in terms of pushing through. For instance, GST is one thing right. which which was already on the cards, on the cards, and hopefully more smoothly implemented now. Uh, Various other issues where ease of doing business, uh, perhaps uh, increasing transparency, that effort which has been on, uh, you know, seeing that projects which were stuck up in various kinds of red tape or, or approvals, etc., could be hastened and speeded up. Uh, particularly large infra projects uh, where state government participation was important and at times uh, got embroiled in the politics of uh, two different parties. Now that many of them have a, a government which is supported by the center, uh, maybe those things can get speeded up. So there are a number of issues where I feel that um, this kind of a larger mandate which is uh, to one party is helpful. Having said that, in a democracy, this could uh, very well change. And uh, I think what's good about India is that uh, economics to a great extent is getting uh, independent of the political ramifications. While it is still dependent, but it is a lot more independent than say it was 20 years right. ago. So to that extent, in, in a way you are answering my question, you are saying right. that or, or indirectly saying that it did not does not matter so much sure. that it you doesn't. have such a large mandate sure. or the will of the people because economically things were moving on a different trajectory. Sure, but of course it helps because yeah. there are issues on which center state cooperation is important. Uh, also, the fact that the parliament gets a lot of time, gets consumed in debates and uh, issues like that, which perhaps when when you see this kind of momentum and mandate, it would be uh, less obstructionist. Right. So, uh, whether it's government or regulation or the combination of both, what are the two or three areas that you think are the most critical that we need to focus on if we are to, you know, as you said, increase capacity, increase consumption, increase connectivity between markets? Well, broadly, I can't fault the direction and, and, and the efforts being made by the government. Yeah. I think they've been fairly laudable and in the right direction. I mean, as they say, Dil Mange more, you can always expect a faster uh, implementation of some of the schemes. You may want uh, greater uh, investment in infrastructure. Uh, a lot of announcements that have been made, uh, 
because of whether it was land related issues or other clearances take time to implement. If we can find a way to speed them up, uh, improve the delivery on that front. Of course, this very major issue of linking up Aadhaar with uh, Jandhan with uh, mobile connectivity to see that uh, economic benefits are transferred directly is a huge idea and I think only partly implemented yet. So that's something that can right. be transformative in terms of saving on subsidies while targeting subsidies to the people who deserve it. So I think all of this is a very... Uh, right. So, okay, la last question. So, uh, you have a significant exposure to the real estate space. What are the signals that you're seeing there which in some ways tell you about the immediate outlook for the economy or for that matter even the medium term outlook for the economy? Well, I think there's a lot of optimism in the lower end of the spectrum there because uh, of this very attractive interest rates that have been announced and also the fact that there are schemes for housing below a certain size. Uh, so I think there is a fill-up and that's really where the big demand is also because the first uh, uh, buyer of a house is typically a person who's uh, either emigrating from the rural areas to the urban areas or somebody who's just drawn his first salary and is probably uh, hoping to have a family and make uh, have a space. So I think that's where there will be a lot of action. I think uh, the big companies have been mostly involved in real estate which is at the little higher end and uh, and that's where the stress will continue for some time because uh, I think a lot more got built mm. than the number of people who could afford it. I mean just to put it uh, in a different way there's a lot of demand for an entry-level car mm. but there may not be enough demand for a Mercedes or right. a BMW at the high end right. but if you and manufacture the same applies for housing as well. yeah and if you manufacture a lot more of those which can't be retrofitted to a smaller size, uh, you, you will probably have that stock unsold while you will continue to want to sell uh, right. the cars which are at a lower price. Right. Mr. Neotay, thank you so much for thank speaking you. with us. Thank you.